Australia is recognised as an amazing country for people to come and visit from all over the world. We are known for our world famous beaches, our dry red sandy desert, huge outback and our amazing Great Barrier Reef. One thing we're not recognised for is our winters. Some foreigners are not even aware that it gets cold enough to snow in Australia. Hi, I'm Jenny Owens and I'm standing here in Perisher in the New South Wales Snowy Mountains. Today, we're going to take a look at a day in the life of a winter athlete. And not just any athlete, me and a few of my teammates, Katja Kramer and Scott Neller. We're all part of the Australian Ski Cross team competing in the Vancouver 2010 Olympic Winter Games. Australian winter athletes have always been under the radar because of our small mountains and short winters. But with Vancouver 2010 Olympic Winter Games just around the corner, I thought it'd be a great idea to show you what our day involves. I'll show you the sacrifices we make, the difficulties we face, but more importantly, the excitement, drills and spills that make our sport so exciting. In 2006, the International Olympic Committee announced there to be a new sport in Vancouver 2010 Olympic Winter Games. Ski cross. Ski cross was invented by two North American crazies with a background in motocross. And this is what it looks like now. So, let's take a look at what our day involves. We get up early, so we're on the hill training by 7am. It's important to have a good breakfast because we'll be on the hill training until 11am. Once we're up at Perisher, it's on with the protective gear. A quick warm up, an inspection of the course to make sure that it's safe, and it's time to start training. <laughs> So Scott, how long have you been competing in ski cross? Well, I raced Alpine for about seven years and last year made the move to uh, ski cross. So I've been racing ski cross for a little over a year now and training's been going really well and looking forward to the Olympics. So why did you decide to cross over to ski cross? Alpine was getting a little bit stale for me and I was after something a little bit more fresh and exciting and ski cross really provided that opportunity for me. And Kat, do you consider yourself a bit of a daredevil? Yeah, I guess I do. I mean, I think you have to be to do this sport. I just love the adrenaline rush, competing head to head, flying through the air and going fast. The part I love about ski cross the most would have to be competition. I love competing and I love the challenge. But on the downside, I'd really have to say I hate preparing my skis the most. It's time consuming and a lot of hard work. What do you guys like most? I really love the head to head competing. There's nothing quite similar to having your competitor right next to you, breathing down your neck. So very exciting stuff. I love the lifestyle. I mean, we get to travel the world, I meet new people, and I get to ski every day. And the worst? Crashing and injury. Definitely packing. Packing and unpacking every seven days. It gets boring, I can tell you that much. <laughs> so how was your season, Jenny? Yeah, my season was okay. It wasn't that great. I had a few hiccups along the way, but I did get myself a few podiums, so hopefully the hiccups are out of the way and I'll get myself a medal in Vancouver. How did you go on the test track this year? Yeah, really well. It was my first World Cup finals and I finished 15th, so it was a great result for me. Oh cool, so how does that make things going into Vancouver for you? Yeah, it was a great morale booster and 
now I've had that experience racing with the best guys. I'm really looking forward to the Olympics. This will be my second Winter Olympics, which gives me some advantage, but there's a lot more involved than just experience. My goal is to podium. Kat, what's your goal? Uh, my goal at the Olympics would be a top eight, but I would be happy with the gold. After training, it's time to prepare my skis. Like I said earlier, tuning my skis is one of the things I hate most. The preparation of one pair of skis takes about 45 minutes for training and about three hours for competition. First, you sharpen the edges. Stone them so they're smooth and then do the other edge. Next is the time consuming part, waxing. For training, I usually put two coats on, but for competition, I try to do three or four, depending on the weather and snow conditions. After applying the wax, you wait about three hours. Scrape the wax off, brush the wax out, and do it all over again. Now that my skis are ready for tomorrow, it's off to the gym for fitness. Our fitness training involves a wide range of activities to keep us in optimal shape. There's a quick warm up and then straight into it. First we do hurdles and ladder, which helps us get faster muscle twitch and improves coordination. Then we do our weights, which builds up strength, power and endurance. We also do a lot of cross training, such as boxing and gymnastics. This increases our body awareness and body control which is a must when racing head-to-head -head with competitors who with the slightest touch can send you crashing down. Oh. <laughs> Last but not least, physio. Physio and massage is usually the best part of the day because you get to lay here and do nothing. It's not always fun though, especially if you have tight muscles or injuries from training. Yum, smells good. What's cooking? Chicken stir fry with lots of veggies. Can you explain why it's important to eat healthy? We need to eat healthy so that we have enough energy to get through the day. So we eat a balanced diet of protein, carbohydrates and lots of veggies. As winter athletes, we need to be careful not to get too thin. Your body wastes a lot of energy trying to stay warm instead of saving the energy for competing or training. So it's okay for athletes to have a treat from time to time. Being a professional athlete is not an easy job. It's more than just wearing your country's colours. It takes commitment, <laughs> sacrifice, dedication, a yes I can attitude and lots of hard work. There are a lot of setbacks, frustrations and disappointments. But when you're aiming high, you have to expect that not everything is going to go your way. It is a long and hard journey, but the end results are all worth it. Finally, it's bedtime. We have to get up and do this again tomorrow and the next day and the next day. We only get one day off a week, so we need all the sleep we can get. So, good night.